epoxy river tables with their fascinating streams of resin flowing through natural wood slabs had become a sensation. Their beauty lay not only in the contrast of materials but in the skill required to create them. As the popularity of these tables grew, so did the demand for detailed documentation that could guide aspiring craftsmen in replicating the designs. However, this apparently simple task had proven to be anything but straightforward. Enter Rich Williams, a young but dedicated craftsman with a passion for both woodworking and storytelling. Richie had grown up in Woodville, learning the trade from his father and grandfather before him. Despite his relative youth, he had already earned a reputation for his meticulous attention to detail and his ability to bring wood to life. When the Woodville Guild of Artisans called for volunteers to document the epoxy river table designs, Richie was the first to step forward. Little did he know this task will lead him on an adventure that will test his skills, his patience, and his very understanding of craftsmanship. Richie stood before the grand oak doors of the Woodville Guild Hall, the weight of his decision settling on his shoulders. The guild had gathered that morning to discuss the agent's need for detailed documentation of epoxy river table designs. Master craftsmen from all corners of Woodville had tried and failed to capture the essence of these creations in writing. Each attempt had ended in frustration. The intricate details proving too subtle to jot down on paper. Richie, are you sure about this? Asked Asamoah, a fellow craftsman and Richie's closest friend. Even Master Morgan couldn't do it, and he has been working with epoxy for 14 years. Richie nodded, determination glossy in his eyes. I have to try, Asamoah. Our crafts is at risk of losing something beautiful if you don't document these designs properly. Besides, I've always believed that if you understand something well enough, you can explain it. With a reassuring pat on his shoulder from Asamoah, Richie pushed open the heavy doors and stepped into the guild hall. The room fell silent as he entered, all eyes turning toward him. Master Morgan, a towering figure with a thick beard and kind eyes, stood at the front of the room. He signaled Richie forward. Young Williams, Morgan began, his voice resonating through the hall. We have seen your work and we believe you may be the one to succeed where others have failed. But be warned, this task is more difficult than it appears. Are you prepared for the challenge? Richie met Morgan's gaze without hesitation. I am Richie Williams. I will do whatever it takes to document these designs. A whisper of approval rippled through the hall. Morgan nodded soberly. Very well. You will have access to the guild's resources and the craftsmen will assist you as needed. Begin your work tomorrow. May your hands be steady and your mind clear. The next morning, Richie arrived at his workshop with a sense of purpose. He carefully laid out his tools and materials, preparing to document the first of many Airpods River table designs. The table before him was a masterpiece crafted by Master Morgan himself. The river of blue resin winding through the rich dark walnut wood seemed to glow with an inner light. Richie began by examining the table closely, noting every detail. He sketched the overall shape, the green patterns, and the way the resin flows seamlessly into the wood. Hours passed 
as he meticulously recorded his observations. Finally, he sat down to write the instructions. Step 1. Select a high-quality wood slab with a natural edge. Step 2. Prepare the slab by sanding it smooth. The wires flowed easily at first, but as Richie delved deeper into the process, he realized just how complex the task was. How could he adequately describe the precise mixture of resin and hardener? The exact temperature and humidity conditions needed for curing? The subtle techniques required to avoid bubbles and imperfections. Frustrations began to mount. Richie's notes grew disjointed. His once clear instructions muddled with uncertainty. By the end of the day, he was no closer to capturing the essence of the design than when he had started. Maybe this is impossible, he muttered to himself, staring at the scattered pages on his notebook. But giving up was not an option. Richie knew he had to find a way to document these designs for the sake of Woodville and its craftsmen. The following days were a blur of field attempts and mounting frustration. Richie's workshop became a battlefield of crumpled paper and discarded sketches. He spent long hours poring over books and consulting with fellow craftsmen. But each time he tried to put pen to paper, the task seemed to slip further from his grasp. One evening, as the sun dipped below the horizon, Richie found himself wandering through the forests that surrounded Woodville. The towering trees and the whispering leaves provided a welcome relief from his mountain stress. Lost in thoughts, he almost didn't notice the small, weathered cottage nestled among the trees. Curiosity picked. Richie approached the cottage and knocked on the door. An elderly woman with kind eyes and a gentle smile answered. Hello, young man. What brings you to my doorstep? She asked. Richie hesitated for a moment before explaining his predicaments. The woman listened intently, nodding as he speak. You remind me of my late husband. She said softly when he had finished. He was a master craftsman too, always striving for perfection, always seeking to capture the beauty of the world in his work. Come inside and perhaps I can help you. The cottage was filled with the scent of herbs and the soft glow of candlelight. The woman who introduced herself as Dinah led Richie to a small table where an unfinished river table lay. This was my husband's last project, Diana explained. He never got to finish it, but he left behind his notes, his thoughts on how to perfect the process. Perhaps he can guide you. Richie spent the evening poring over the notes, his heart racing with excitement. Diana's husband had meticulously recorded every step of his process, from selecting the wood to mixing the resin. Richie realized that the key to documenting the designs lay not just in the technical details, but in understanding the heart and soul of the craft. Armed with newfound knowledge and a fresh perspective, Richie returned to his workshop with renewed determination. He carefully reviewed Diana's husband's notes, drawing inspiration from the insight within. He began to understand that creating an epoxy river table was as much an art as it was a science. Richie decided to start from scratch, taking his time to select the perfect wood slab and meticulously preparing it. He paid close attention to the environment ensuring the temperature and humidity were just right. As he mixed the resin and hardener, he followed the notes with precision but also allowed his intuition to guide him. The process was slow, painstaking but Richie could feel the difference. The resin flowed smoothly. 
merging with the wood in a dance of colors and textures. He documented each step, but this time his words were filled with the passion and understanding he had gained. Step 1. Select a high quality wood slab with a natural edge. Feel the grain, the texture. Let the wood speak to you. Step 2. Prepare the slab by sanding it smooth, but retain its natural beauty. Step 3. Mix the resin and hardener with care, ensuring the ratios are precise. Pay attention to the temperature and humidity. They are as important as the materials themselves. As Richie worked, he felt a sense of harmony, a connection to the craft that went beyond mere technique. He realized that to document the designs, he had to convey not just the steps, but the essence of the process, the love and respect for the materials, the patience and dedication required to bring the vision to life. Weeks passed, and Richie's documentation began to take shape. He shared his progress with Master Morgan and the other craftsmen who were impressed by the clarity and depth of his instructions. Yet, Richie knew the true tests would come when someone else attempted to follow his guide. Asamoa, ever supportive, volunteered to be the first to try. Under Richie's watchful eye, Asamoa selected a wood slab and began the process. Richie provided guidance but refrained from intervening, wanting to see if his documentation could truly stand on its own. There were moments of tension as Asamoah struggled with the final details. Bubbles appeared in the resin and the wood seemed stubbornly resistant to smooth sanding. But Richie's words, written with care and understanding, provided the guidance as someone needed to overcome these challenges. Remember to take your time. Richie's instructions read, The wood and resin must be treated with patience. If bubbles appear, use a heat gun gently to coerce them out. If the wood resists, change your sanding techniques but never force it. Slowly but surely, as someone began to find his rhythm, the resin flowed smoothly, the wood gleamed under his careful touch. By the end of the process, he had created a beautiful epoxy river table, a testament to both his skill and Richie's documentation. The guild gathered to admire the finished table. Their eyes filled with awe and respect. Master Morgan approached Richie, a proud smile on his face. You have done it, young Williams. Morgan said, you have captured the essence of your craft in your words. Your documentation will guide future craftsmen, ensuring that the beauty of Epoxy River Tables lives on. With the success of Asamoah's table, Richie's documentation was refined and finalized. The Woodville Guild of Artisans published it as a comprehensive guide, a treasure trove of knowledge for craftsmen everywhere. The guide included detailed steps, illustrations, and most importantly, the heart and soul of the crafts. Richie continued to create epoxy river tables, each one a new adventure in artistry and craftsmanship. He became known not just as skilled craftsman, but as a teacher and storyteller, passing on the wisdom of Woodville to the next generation. Years later, as Richie looked out over the bustling town, he felt a deep sense of fulfillment. The simple task of documenting Epoxy River Table designs had become a journey of discovery and growth. It had tested his skills, his patience, and his understanding but it had also taught him the true meaning of craftsmanship. In the end, Richie realized that the beauty of Airport River tables lay not just in the finished product, but in the journey of creation. It was a journey that he had successfully captured in his guide, ensuring that the legacy of Woodville's 
master craftsmen would endure for generations to come. And so the tale of Richie Williams and the Airport River Tables became a legend in Woodville, inspiring craftsmen and adventurers alike to pursue their passions with dedications and hearts. For in the world of craftsmanship, it was not the destination that mattered most, but the journey itself. Consider subscribing to the channel for more videos like this. Thank you.